You are watching Practical Electroacupuncture, an online distance learning continuing education course by Waynesville Wellness. For information on all our other online and in-person continuing education courses, please visit ceuseminars.org. If you are watching this class for credit, below you in the YouTube description, you will see a worksheet. It's best to fill this out while you're watching this video. Copy and paste it into a word processing document. And as you move through the video, answer the questions. When you've completed that, email it to us. The email is in the description below. Within 24 hours of receiving your completed worksheet, we will email you the quiz. Fill out the quiz, save a copy and email it to us. Again, within 24 hours, we will email you your certificate if you pass the quiz. 80% is considered passing, and should you fail it, you will get a second chance to retake it. My name is Nate Novgrad. I am a licensed acupuncturist in Waynesville, North Carolina. I got my introduction to traditional Chinese medicine through martial arts. I began at a very young age practicing Taekwondo and moved from that into the Chinese martial arts. My primary teacher, a man named Brian Moran, trained me in Shaolin Kung Fu, Tai Chi, Xing Yi, Bagua, Emperor's Long Fist, and Qigong. I've been training with him since 1997. While I was training with him, he went through Chinese medical school and became a licensed acupuncturist. That introduced me to formal education in Chinese medicine. Through that martial arts background, I learned a lot of the peripheral modalities of Chinese medicine. It's very common in China for people who practice martial arts to also learn some of the traditional Chinese medicine. Through this practice, I learned a traditional system of Tui Na. I learned about Moxa and cupping and Gua Sha, and even some topical herbal jowls, topical herbal formulas for trauma. Eventually, I decided that Chinese medicine was what I wanted to do with my life. I went out to Portland, Oregon, and enrolled in the Oregon College of Oriental Medicine. They love to tell everyone they're the number one ranked school in the country, and I have the student loan debt to back that up. I went through their Masters of Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine program and graduated in 2009. When I finished my formal education in Chinese medicine, I knew I was going to move back to North Carolina where I grew up and open my practice in the mountains here. In that process, I spent a month backpacking across New Zealand, waiting on my license to process. And then I opened up here in the fall of 2009. I have continued a practice here in Waynesville, North Carolina ever since and have grown that practice from just me as a single practitioner to a wellness center, Waynesville Wellness, with my wife, who's a massage therapist, other massage therapists, a licensed clinical social worker, naturopathic doctors. We've also had uh, a number of fitness classes, yoga and dance and Tai Chi, and we host continuing education courses as well. In 2010, my martial arts instructor, Brian Moran, asked me to help him run some continuing education classes here in Western North Carolina. I began TAing for him, as well as handling all of the administrative aspects of running those classes. He eventually decided to go back to school and get his doctorate in physical therapy and quit teaching. When that happened, I decided in 2015 to start teaching some continuing education classes myself. This decision largely came from having to take continuing education classes, like we all do, to keep our licenses active, 
and realizing that many of the courses available were not a very good quality. A lot of them are painful to sit through and don't give you any practical, useful information that you can immediately incorporate into your own practice. That year, in 2015, I sat through a class where we literally sprinkled imaginary gold dust on each other because that will somehow heal you with alchemy for 15 hours. That was an expensive waste of my time just to get some credit. The very next class that I took that cycle, the instructor read from the book he was publishing word for word the entire two-day weekend. If that wasn't bad enough, it was billed as a practical class with hands-on applications, and we spent no time with partners on tables. The entire class was a lecture of him reading the book. If you're an expert in something and you write a book in it, you probably don't need to read it to lecture on it. Maybe reference some notes. We all do that. But word-for-word -word reading was a painful way to be exposed to the information, and it was all theoretical with no practical applications. So I realized that there was obviously a need for some genuinely useful courses that don't bore you to death and aren't super expensive. So I started teaching in the fall of 2015 with one class, well, three classes, one long weekend of classes on Twina. I now have 23 classes and counting, and I teach an average of 26 weekends a year. The main goal of my courses is to provide practical, applicable information in a concise and hopefully not boring manner. This way, at the end of a course, you have something that you can immediately use. Rather than thinking, oh, this is, this is interesting, that's great theory, it's interesting from an academic standpoint but not being able to know how to use it when you go back to see patients Monday morning. Hopefully, this course, as with all my others, will give you enough information to be able to apply what you're learning. This course in particular is geared towards giving you everything you need to know to practically use electroacupuncture in your own clinic with patients immediately. You'll know about which frequencies and modes to use, what common conditions you should or shouldn't use electroacupuncture on, any of that sort of information that makes it easy to incorporate. Because if it isn't useful, then it wasn't really useful to learn. What is electroacupuncture? Strictly speaking, electroacupuncture is the application of a pulsing electrical stimulation to acupuncture needles that are inserted into acupuncture points. Generally, this stimulation is of the alternating current variety. Electroacupuncture developed in China. Its origins are around the 1930s when they were looking for a means to stimulate needles more effectively than simple manual stimulation. Electroacupuncture is described in most comprehensive textbooks on acupuncture. And indeed, generally, acupuncture schools have a dedicated course for it. Though both of these have varying degrees of thoroughness. In many cases, simply hitting the very cursory information with regards to electroacupuncture. Indeed, at OCOM, we had a dedicated course for electroacupuncture. But other than covering how to turn on a machine, how to set it to a single mode with a single frequency combination, and safely attach electrodes to patients, we didn't really get into most of the details. We were really never taught what the benefits were, or which frequencies were useful for which conditions, or even how the electricity and current actually work in the body. We didn't cover much, if any, research on electroacupuncture, and it really didn't leave me prepared to comprehensively use 
electroacupuncture. Electroacupuncture is called many things besides electroacupuncture. E-STEM is one of the more popular ways to refer to it, and this is short for electrical stimulation acupuncture. It's also known as percutaneous nerve stimulation, or PENS, which is similar to TENS, which is transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. That doesn't use needles, so it's a little different. We're going to talk about that and compare the two later on. Sometimes you'll hear what's referred to as transcutaneous electrical acupoint stimulation. This is sort of a combination of TENS and electroacupuncture. It uses stick-on electrodes, more like a TENS pad, but is stimulating directly at acupuncture points rather than just over muscle bellies. We're going to cover some of the history of electroacupuncture. The first known instance of a Westerner using needling on a patient is from 1810. A gentleman named Dr. Louise Berlioz. Six years later, he started to posit that Alessandro's Volta's direct current batteries might be useful in enhancing that stimulation effect. He believed that it would stimulate and replenish the nerves. While he theorized that electrical stimulation through the needling could be effective, he never actually experimented or practiced it. He simply thought about it and talked about it. It wasn't until about seven years later, one of his compatriots, a Frenchman, whose name I won't butcher, but you can see on the slide, began to actually incorporate electrical stimulation into his practice. He used gold and silver needles, not unlike the Chinese, though I don't think he ever discussed tonifying or reducing with different needles. He also used a stimulation period of about five to 10 minutes. Again, not terribly unlike standard acupuncture. He believed that a sufficient charge of direct current could modify pain responses and change capillary blood flow, making it a useful therapy. One of the earliest ways in which he used electricity and needles was discharging static electricity through the needles. Electroacupuncture was documented being used in China in the 1960s for around 70 conditions. In fact, in this same period, the Chinese government began manufacturing one of the earliest electrostimulator machines, which has a descendant still on the market today, with lots of modifications, obviously. Electroacupuncture began to replace manual needle stimulation in the practice of acupuncture anesthesia during surgery. It also became one of the more common ways to use acupuncture for research. Electroacupuncture provides consistent, repeatable stimulation. If you set it to three hertz, you get three cycles a second for the stimulation getting a human to consistently do three stimulations per second on the needle for 15 minutes straight is much more difficult. In fact, in a PubMed search of research on acupuncture from 1975 to 2011 showed 48% of the studies that were done on acupuncture for animals used electrostimulation in some form. In this time, there were over 3,300 studies published. The basic practice or protocol of electroacupuncture is not terribly different from traditional manual acupuncture. You choose the points that you wish to stimulate, you needle them and attain the da chi sensation, that distending fullness, then you would attach the electrodes and provide the stimulation while the needles are in. 
for a period of a few minutes up to maybe 30. However, with electroacupuncture, often points aren't just chosen based on the traditional systems, but are chosen often on more orthopedic or myofascial approaches, more modern anatomical approaches. This is not uncommon even for modern manual acupuncture. I would like to talk briefly about some of the benefits of electroacupuncture. Particularly, it provides continuous stimulation with no worry of practitioner fatigue. This means that the patient can get as much stimulation as they need without having to worry about the practitioner slowing down or deciding it's time to stop because they're tired. Electroacupuncture also provides a stronger stimulation than manual acupuncture. It can, in fact, give you more stimulation with less tissue damage than you can achieve with manual acupuncture. You don't always need more, but in certain cases you do. The stimulation is also considerably more consistent. It's very easy to set a frequency, set a timer, and let the acupuncture machine do the stimulation. There are certain situations in which electroacupuncture has been shown to be more effective than manual acupuncture. Having this in your tool bag allows you to effectively treat those cases where you wouldn't get results with manual acupuncture alone. Another benefit of electroacupuncture is that it's less time consuming for the practitioner. Once you set the machine up, you don't have to do anything. You can leave the room as long as your patient has a way to get a hold of you. You can be treating your next patient. With manual stimulation, you have to sit there and continually stimulate the needles. This frees you up, if you use electrostim acupuncture, to go and do charting or work on another patient while the machine continues that stimulation. 